Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So I was going through YouTube and I found this video and it is worthy of a response. It's a video from this guy. You would say the guy. So let's start. If you really look at Islamic history and study it closely, you will soon realize that there is no such thing as true peaceful Islam. It never existed. Let me show you why I say that and why I claim that Islam was never a religion of peace. From the very early years after the birth of Islam and the death of Prophet Muhammad, you find that Uthman, the Caliph of the Muslims, Uthman ibn Affan, was at the hands of Muslims. After him, Ali ibn Abi Talib, the cousin of the Prophet, was also at the hands of Muslims. After Ali, al Hussein, the grandson of the Prophet, was at the hands of Muslims. And his brother too, al Hassan, son of Ali and another grandson of the Prophet, was also betrayed and poisoned to death at the hands of Muslims. Subhanallah, this man is a complete joke. Okay, I'm pretty sure you must have seen this guy. I My last video was on this man. You know, for those of you who don't know him, this is al Masri. He's an Egyptian Arab. A next Christian. He left Christianity for obvious reasons. Okay, so um, this is something we keep talking about. Uh, so he left Christianity for obvious reasons. Instead of debating, instead of debunking Christianity, telling people why he left Christianity, he has focused his time and energy to debunk in Islam. And this is what you get because um, this guy is not sincere. You know, I'm pretty sure he's just, you know, after the, the clicks, he's just after the views, after the money. And that's all. That's all he cares. You know, look at the video. He said from day one, Islam was never a religion of peace. So why do you make that claim today? Why do we Muslims make such claim? I was thinking this guy was going to bring something from the Quran or from the Hadith of the Prophet you know, showing or demonstrating that Islam is not a religion of peace. And then he's bringing this, subhanAllah. This is what I keep saying. The actions of Muslims doesn't mean that Islam propagates that. In every society, we see people that, you know, they are going nuts. And their actions doesn't mean it represents that society or what, you know, they preach. If we say Islam is a peaceful religion, it's because we see these things in the glorious Quran. And I will be demonstrating that, inshallah, using the Quran. First and foremost, Muslim killing Muslim. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say regarding this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Nisa, this is the only excuse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave. Allah said, it is not for a believer to kill another believer except by mystique. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. And even if you kill a believer by mystique, not knowingly, you kill the believer by mystique, there is something you will have to do. وَمَنْ قَتَلَ مُؤْمِنًا خَطَعًا فَتَحْرِيرُ رَقَبَةٍ مُؤْمِنًا and whoever kills a believer by mystic would have to free a believing slave. And it doesn't just end there. After freeing a believing slave, there's something more. And also a diya, there's something we call blood money, okay? A diya, you would have to pay to the family of this person, okay? And this money is a huge money. I think 100 camels are the equivalent in cash. And Allah said, Illa in yasaddaqo, except that this family, you know, gives it or asks you to leave it as a charity because this is their own right. And if they don't forgo this right, then you will have to pay that diya, which is equivalent to 100 camels, either 100 camels, bringing 100 camels, or um, the equivalent in cash. So you see, um, this is this is just killing a believer by mistake. Not talk of someone that does that intentionally. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the next verse in Surah An-Nisa? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَنْ قَتَلَ مُؤْمِنًا مُتَعَمِّدًا فَجَزَاؤُهُ جَهَنَّمْ And whoever kills a believer intentionally, you intentionally kill a believer, then your reward is the hell. خَالِيرًا فِيهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you would remain there forever. وَقَضِبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْ And the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is upon that person. وَلَعَنَهُ not just the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concluded, And Allah has prepared for him a great punishment. This is for the one that kills a believer intentionally. So a Muslim killing a Muslim, we see the judgment remains in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah would judge such person. So stop bringing this person kills this person, this Muslim kills this Muslim, and this shows that Islam is not a peaceful religion. And in other verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, 
ولا تقتل النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق and do not kill a soul do not take a life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made forbidden إلا بالحق except by right by right in other words a soul for a soul when someone kills then he should be killed and Allah continued ومن قتل مظلوما فقد جعلنا لوليه سلطانا فلا يسرف في القتل and whosoever kills unjustly then we have bestowed on his hair authority but let him not exceed limits in the matter of taking life so why would someone come to the and say a muslim kills another muslim it shows islam is not a religion of peace if this is not in sincerity then truly i don't know what it is now this is regarding believers so now the question is what has islam said regarding those who don't believe in islam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said la yanhaakum allahu 'anil ladhina lam yuqatilukum fi ad-dini wa lam yukhrijukum min diyarikum allah has not forbidden you regarding those who do not fight you regarding your religion they don't fight you because of your religion and they don't expel you from your homes an tabarruhum wa tuqsitu ilayhim from being righteous towards them and acting justly towards them subhanallah righteousness and acting justly towards these people if they don't fight you because of your religion they don't drive you away from your homes as we see currently happen in palestine if they don't do this then you should act justly towards these people and you should act righteously towards these people and allah concluded inna allah yuhibbu almuqsitin and it allah loves those who are justly Subhanallah and in fact even in terms of war what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell the muslims wa qatilu fi sabilillah you should fight for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who should we fight should we just go out there and start fighting people no remember the verse i just quoted when they live peaceful with you then you should do the same you should reciprocate the same be just towards them be righteous towards them Okay so who should we go and fight alladhina yuqatilunakum those who fight you you don't just go out there and fight people no fight those who fight you okay we don't turn your cheek if you slap us no we are not that you know insensitive and this is not how you know the world works you fight those who fight you and Allah said wala ta'tadu even if you fight them even if i give you the permission to fight those who fight you wala ta'tadu do not exceed limits in other words do not transgress Inna Allah la yuhibbu al-mu'tadin. Allah indeed doesn't love those who transgress. Okay? Even if you fight those people, don't don't transgress. We have limitations even in battle. We don't kill women, we don't kill the elderly, we don't kill children as we see happening currently in Palestine. We don't desecrate the dead. We don't pee on the dead. We respect the dead. So these are limitations set by Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala and Allah loves those people that keep these limitations because you find muslim wanting in these things doesn't mean islam propagates it subhanallah there's this video of what I watch of someone peeing on the dead on a dead muslim there's another one which is even worse I saw this guy poking out the eyes of a muslim a dead body I don't know if it is honorable for them to do that in their religion but then in islam Allah has forbidden these things Allah has prohibited these things So for you to come to the and say a Muslim kills another Muslim means Islam is not peaceful. At the end of the day, we realize that this guy, Adam al Misri, is just a joke. And these you would see in the video I debunked of him saying that the Quran is not preserved. Okay, this guy kept bringing you know weak hadith and saying Ahmad bin Hanbal, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم cited upon him when Ahmad bin Hanbal lived 150 years after the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. You know, so no one said Aisha narrated to Mardawi. Mardawi lived more than 300 years after the death of Aisha radiallahu anha. So this guy keeps bringing weak narrations, keeps fabricating things. And then you will see people at your other end applauding this guy. You've made your research, you've done good work and all that. And as part of it is, Christians are the ones applauding this guy. This guy left your religion because he saw it as something, as a joke. Okay? The bunking it is a waste of time. It is as clear as the day. So at the end of the day, this guy is totally insincere. He's just after the money and the views and all that. And um, like I said, there's a difference between Islam and Muslim. Islam preach peace, even in terms of war, in terms of peace. Okay, there are we have rulings, we have rules, we have laws we should abide to. So because you find Muslims wanting doesn't mean that you know these things are okay in Islam. Okay, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. has kept severe punishment for those that kill other muslims so when this happens we see his judgment is with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so with this i say assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh catch you in the next one